from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Ramping Up Your English is for English language learners from all language backgrounds who have already begun the process of learning English as their second language. It's a program for people of all ages. If you're seeking greater English proficiency, this program is designed to help you reach that goal. Ramping Up Your English is a support program for English learners who have already passed the beginning stages of learning English. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher English proficiency. We use English to teach English. The theme of our first unit is Trains and Railroads. This is episode 24, segment one. In our last episode, we traveled from Washington, D.C. aboard Amtrak's Cardinal train toward Chicago. In part three, we arrive in Chicago after enjoying some beautiful scenery. You can watch part three on my website, letscreate.org. You can also find it on episode 24 page at that website letscreate.org. In today's episode, we'll change trains and head further west. And if you have never been west of the Mississippi River in the United States, imagine yourself on the California Zephyr. You've seen mountains and forests and fields in the east, but that has not prepared you for the landscape you'll encounter on the Great Plains and the Rocky Mountains. Let's call an all aboard for the westbound California Zephyr. Pulling out of Chicago's Union Station, Amtrak's California Zephyr leaves one of America's largest cities to cross its widest empty spaces to end in San Francisco three days later. Imagine the excitement of someone who's never seen the West anticipating the adventure and the unique landscape that lies ahead. It's this romance with the West that gave birth to the California Zephyr, a premier train running on the tracks of three different railroads. We see another Amtrak train waiting at an old Chicago warehouse reminding us that Chicago is the hub from which nearly all the long-distance trains depart. We cross the Chicago River and encounter factories that once made Chicago the second largest city in the United States. I'm reminded that Chicago got its start as a meatpacking center, later expanding into other industries. Parallel bridges cross streets and rails as we leave the city behind and enter the countryside on the way to Omaha, Nebraska. Soon we cross the Mississippi River. Even this far north, the Mississippi is wide. The historic California Zephyr was operated here by the railroad that would become the Burlington Northern, the first of three to proudly carry the California Zephyr. For the traveler exploring the West, the Mississippi River is a boundary between the industrial settled East and the Great Beyond. Now we speed through the flat Great Plains of Iowa and Nebraska. This was a section of the Transcontinental Railroad where the Union Pacific set and broke world records of laying rails toward the West Coast, receiving a square mile of land for every mile of track constructed. The Union Pacific kept the route as straight as possible, competing with the Central Pacific Railroad to build the greatest length of track. The California Zephyr took a different route, heading for Denver, where the Rio Grande Railroad would take the California Zephyr through its Rocky Mountain Wonderland. The first light of day greets the California Zephyr at Denver. This is where the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad took the Zephyr through its second section. 
Denver is the largest city in the region. Its humble beginnings of a few ranches was quickly eclipsed by the silver and other hard rock mining in the area. This activity gave Denver and the railroad its birth. The Rio Grande Railroad built its Rocky Mountain Empire to compete with Union Pacific and Southern Pacific for freight and passenger traffic to the West Coast. The California Zephyr dips deep into southern Utah, then back north to Salt Lake City. Pulling out of Denver, we climb steadily, rising above the Great Plains and approaching the Rocky Mountains. For those traveling west for the first time, the familiar views of home are a thing of the past. Those expecting rugged country and uncrowded spaces are not disappointed. The California Zephyr has already taken them into the west. Here we enter one of many tunnels along the route. Soon, westbound passengers find themselves at the roof of North America. This snow-dusted wonderland features the Colorado River, not far from its headwaters in Rocky Mountain National Park. The Colorado River will now be the Zephyr's companion through numerous scenic canyons. Looking out through the large viewing car windows, many of the iconic Old West scenes present themselves and the imagination is free to wander through this still wild country. From the privacy of a roomette in the sleeping car, this jaw-dropping scenery can be enjoyed in quiet. There are many areas of the train where passengers can get a great view of the scenery. This view is from the dining car. The coach has large windows. The viewing car has wraparound windows near the ceiling where passengers can look up and see the many cliffs and gorge walls along this route. Across the river we see a section of Interstate 70 one of the last major parts of the interstate system to be completed. Like the railroad, the highway depends on tunnels to carry traffic through this mountainous country. There's something about these soaring, craggy walls that sets my imagination on fire. I'm not alone in this. The California Zephyr's schedule is timed to pass here and during the daylight. Where else can you see a sight like this? while deciding what to eat for lunch. <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure if you knew what you wanted. I think I'll get the Angus burger again. I was thinking about having the burger too. Do you work for Amtrak? No. I'm a big fan though. Oh, you are? <laughs> As you can tell. Yeah. The California Zephyr continues to follow the Colorado River, arriving in Glenwood Springs in part two of the California Zephyr Westbound. Welcome back to Ramping Pulling Up out Your of English, Chicago's a support Union program Station, for intermediate-level English learners who want to improve their English proficiency. If that's you, you're in the right place. The California Zephyr is an example of a long-distance train. Passengers spend three days on the train to cross this great western landscape. While such a trip opens up a scenic utopia, there's an aspect of endurance in being dependent on the train services for all this time in transit. One aspect of long distance train travel that makes the trip so enjoyable are the fresh prepared meals for sale in the dining car. The large seats in the coach and the freedom to move about the train made these trips great experiences for me, with occasional trips to the dining car for a special meal. Now, I'm more likely to rent a roomette in a sleeping car for a multi-day trip like this. The, the uh, price of the sleeper includes meals in the diner. 
Long distance trains throughout the world offer food in a dining car, and it's typical for any railroad to lose money on the meals they serve. In other words, the food in the diner costs more to prepare than the price charged on the menu. Yet railroads continue to provide dining cars because, well, that's what gets, helps get uh, people on the train, helps attract travelers to spend several days on the long distance train. Now, some members of the U.S. Congress are well aware of how dining car expenses work on long distance trains, yet they pass legislation that demands that Amtrak make a profit on meals on these trains. Now, they are doing the bidding of certain billionaires who want to eliminate Amtrak. They know that if they can devalue the meals, fewer passengers will take the long distance trains. And if the long distance trains, like the California Zephyr we just saw, can be eliminated, the system of rail travel in the United States will fall apart. When we return, we'll use this example to write a persuasive letter in English.